Dr. Schumacher, and I'm going to talk about uh, Helen Gardner, my grandmother's career, uh, the films that she made, and the important contributions she made to early American cinema. She started making films in 1910, and she made her last film in 1924. She um, made films with Vitagraph Company of America until she started her own company, which she announced in the spring of 1912. She called her company Helen Gardner Picture Players because in those days, movie actors were called picture players. It was like they were stage actors, except they were in pictures. She made 10 feature films before she closed her company in 1914. Her goal, her overriding goal, was to make films that were of very high quality, that were long feature length films. And at the time she made Cleopatra, most people didn't believe that an audience would sit still to watch a single film for a whole evening. They thought that they wanted to stay with the old one reelers that took 15 minutes each and you could see a whole bunch of different ones. But Helen Gardner pioneered in making the first full-length feature film made in the United States. Her Cleopatra was a, a six-reel film. In it, she played, she not only produced it, she designed the costumes, she participated in writing the story and the screenplay, and she edited the film. She did everything. So she made this long film, and in it, she starred as Cleopatra, and it was based on the French play, Antony and Cleopatra, by Victorian Sardou. But she, this is the story about Cleopatra's love affair with Mark Antony, and ultimately the death of both Mark Antony, the Roman general, general, and Cleopatra. She was so sexy in this movie that the censors cut out 12 feet from her death dance because they said it was entirely too raw. Helen Gardner was on screen and off, a very sexy woman. So she became known as one of the first vamps. The vamp was a, a woman who attracted and seduced men and then she chewed them up and destroyed them. So probably most people have heard of Theda Barra. Helen Gardner was vamping two years before Theda, Theda Barra made her films. And furthermore, Theda Barra was a creation of the producer William Fox. She apparently led a very boring life. She wasn't vamping off stage, unlike my grandmother, who vamped on stage, on screen, and off. So Cleopatra is a, um, a very true picture of what Helen Gardner was really like as a person and as an artist. The movie became a huge hit. It showed all over the world for over 10 years, and now it's considered a classic of silent film. It shows on, uh, it shows on Turner Classic Movies from time to time. I was very fortunate to be given the pa private papers and film memorabilia collection that Helen Gardner left when she died. And among that material was a piece of her costume from Cleopatra, her great 1912 film. She made the costumes for the film, so she undoubtedly made this, this piece. And I think she wore it around her waist, and there's a longer piece that extended from this down to the floor. But it's in very, very fragile condition, so I could not bring it with me today. Um, but I recognize this. When I pulled this out of the, the things I was given, I recognize it from a photograph of her playing Cleopatra, and she's wearing this in the photograph. And she wore it in another feature that she made that was based on an Arabian Nights story. So this was very, uh, very precious to her. It's a kind of a cruel embroidery, and then it's got these uh, stones pasted on it following the lines of the embroidery. 
And I also found this um, pendant, which has inside it a piece, a scrap from the same material, and in the center, a tiny, tiny headshot of her lover when she made this. It's very, very pale and very faded, but I recognize it. My mother said that Helen Gardner wore real jewelry in her own productions and said that she was the first actress to do this. So I don't know if she wore these rings in her productions, but these were hers. My mother wore them when I was growing up, and she left them to me, and so I have them now. Two very, very beautiful, uh, elegant rings of the period. And this bracelet, which is uh, coral and um, cloisonne enamel was undoubtedly hers. Another piece that was in her collection was this ostrich feather fan. Um, I didn't, I haven't seen it in any of her, her, um, her features because only three of them have survived. She made ten feature films and only three have survived. So this is not used in any of them. But this lovely fan has um, a real tortoise shell structure, frame, and handle. And actually, there are two of them. There were two in the collection I was given, along with tons of photographs and her writings. She was a prolific writer, and stills from her movies, which enabled me to identify the features that she made. She made, made 10 feature films. She closed her company in 1914. She made, during her career, between 1910 and 1924, she made a total of 62 films. And 29% of them have survived in whole or in part. So Helen Gardner's company was the first company established by an actress, the first production, movie production company, established by an actress for the sole purpose of make, making feature films it was the first established um, around a single performer. And it was, um, it was the first established by an actress without the help of a man. There were a couple of other actresses who had established production companies, but they were doing it with a man, with their husbands. Helen Gardner did it alone. So she was very much a pioneer. She was, she was editing her films. She was writing them. She was producing them. And in fact, my mother appears in Cleopatra when she was a nine-year-old girl. I watched the film, and I have replayed and replayed that scene, and I recognize her. She's also given credits in the credits at the beginning. But she played a tiny little bit part. She was an adorable little girl. She looked, as if I say so myself, she looked very much like I did when I was nine years old, which is basically how I recognized her. And Helen Gardner also featured her mother in some of her own pictures. But she had, she had a very ambitious goal. She wanted to make films that were better than anybody else was making, that they were higher in quality, they were more elevated, they were more literary, they were more intellectual, and they were more elegant than any films that anybody was making at the time. She she was so ambitious, she created extremely interesting parts for herself, which enabled her to show all of the different facets of her complex personality. So she set her films, Cleopatra was set in Egypt, ancient Egypt, and about a Roman general. And then her next film was set in ancient Greece. The Daughter of Pan was set in great ancient Greece, and then she did one set in old Spain. She did a film that was uh, set in the French Revolution, The Terror. Um, she did other films. Of, she did one on Russia, Russian cities and Siberia. I mean, she was all over history, and she was all over the globe. So this woman, who had such ambitions, was a true pioneer in silent films. Now, in recent years, film historians have been resurrecting, recovering the contributions that women made to early cinema. And women were doing all kinds of things in front of the camera and behind the camera. And they were sometimes given credit, sometimes not. 
But when the men discovered that movie making, movies was a big business and could make a lot of money, they pushed the women out. And so the women have never really fully recovered the important position that they had in early cinema in the United States. They haven't gotten back today to where they were then. So this was a very important period, a very interesting one. And my grandmother, my grandmother, Helen Gardner, was right out there among the first, striking out on her own and making us all, setting an example for all of us of what a woman can achieve if she controls the means of production.